Morning everyone. Uh, well, it's morning here in the UK. Uh, the clocks have just changed. It's uh, now officially winter here in the UK. It's pretty cold. It's pretty wet. It's not a nice morning, but I'm out at the crack of dawn testing the 39 kilowatt hour uh, Kona Electric. And uh, what are we doing today? Well, today I'm trying to do a rapid gate type test. Today I'm going to do three rapid chargers and uh, drive assertively in between. I want to not try and make the Kona fail, but try and prove to everyone uh, that with complete confidence that even buying the smaller battery level Kona Electric, there isn't any problem with uh, battery conditioning and charge rates. So that's the plan, but what's actually going to happen, I don't know, because I've never done it before. The smaller 39 kilowatt hour, well yeah, that's just like the same size as the Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour. Um, which does actually have the rapid gate issue. So, no, this video is not about saying rapid gate lots and putting it in the title and trying to get lots of views. I'm not interested in that whatsoever because that's sort of done and dusted. But people buying the cars will want to know with confidence that it works okay. And what are the charge rates that you're likely to get? So the problem that you've got with uh, buying an electric car is that you don't understand how it's going to charge. And you can't really find out until you've got the car. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you can ask the dealer and they don't know. Um, you can ask Hyundai and they don't tell you very much. So you can look at the brochure. You can look at the brochure and the specifications for the car. So take the 39 kilowatt hour Kona. The brochure says that it will charge to 80% in 57 minutes. But is that 57 minutes from 0% to 80, or 20% to 80, or 40% to 80? You know, what is it? Um, is it going to be 57 minutes from whatever level of charge, or is it up to 57 minutes? It doesn't say that. So you're basically left guessing, not knowing, until you actually come to charge, how long it's actually going to take. And it's all based on what rate of charge you're going to get. And that's what you don't know. You don't know whether the car is going to throttle back and give you less charge than the maximum, less than it could or should do. What we'll use are graphs like this. We'll see a graph like this produced by somebody on the internet that's measured what they experienced on a particular day at a particular time from a particular state of charge, temperature, all of those variables, and that's what they received. They may test it two or three times, and they may try and get consistent results, but that doesn't prove how the battery management system works. It only proves what they received during those tests. And that's the problem that I've experienced uh, in this video and the testing that I've done with this 39 kilowatt hour what my expectations were from a curve of kilowatts that I should expect to receive at the car, I didn't get. So first rapid charge of the day, and the first thing the car says is three hours to 100%. Three hours! That sort of sounds like what I reported before about inaccurate charge times, doesn't it? And uh, we only got 22 kilowatts as well, all the way through from 6% to 19%. But as the state of charge increased, so did the rate of charge. So we did get up to 38 kilowatts. And then there's the noise from the battery management system. Even from inside the car. But the rate of charge did drop to 33, 34 kilowatts while the battery management system was on. So at 69% state of charge, it dropped down to 21 kilowatts, 21, 22, and stayed at that sort of rate until the early 70%. Then at 75%, it dropped again to 14 kilowatts and stayed at that all the way through until 80%. Those steps down in charge rate seem a lot earlier than they are on the 64 kilowatt hour. So in summary, that's an hour and three minutes to charge from 6% to 80%, more than the 57 that uh, Hyundai say in the brochures, and we added 116 miles of range. That equates to 110 miles an hour charge rate, and we also added approximately 29 kilowatt hours. So I set off with 130 miles on the GOM, uh, had 77 miles to travel, plenty of range to do it in, kept a good speed, wasn't intending on breaking any speed limits, but we certainly kept up with traffic, and traffic was very light. Efficiency at these sort of speeds seemed to be exactly the same as my 64 kilowatt hour, so the uh, less weight didn't seem to make a difference. So we made it to, to Peterborough okay, 77.7 uh, .7 miles travelled in just over an hour and a half, 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour used and coincidentally uh, we've got a nice even number. We started with 80% state of charge and it's down to 20% state of charge when we arrived. So 60% used. Uh, 
that seems okay. Uh, Efficiency is quite low compared to what I'm used to. Um, but yeah, I was going quite quick. The roads were wet and uh, yeah, it's really not a nice day out there at all. So yeah, not a nice day. It's cold. Here's something to mention, uh, something I've noticed. The heating system in this Kona and mine as well. It, uh, it doesn't work very well. Um, I'm used to a car that you put to 19, 20, 21 degrees. 21 sometimes too hot for me in my old Fiesta. Uh, this, uh, at 22, 23, sometimes it still feels like it's blowing cold air out. Um, and in fact, I wanted to test that, so I've been uh, acquiring this, um, a laser thermometer, to check. So while I've been driving along with the heating set to 22 degrees, I've checked the air vents and the air vents and uh, what's coming out isn't uh, 22. It's sometimes 14, 15, 16 degrees. Uh, sometimes it's the right temperature. I had it set to 24 uh, at another time and 24 was what was coming out. But uh, there are times, and I don't know why, that the right temperature is not coming out. Now, maybe that thinks that the car is warm and it's trying to cool it down slightly. Well, it just makes you feel cold. Um, it's not a warm feeling car, which is uh, a little bit of a shame. Coming from an ice car, there's a lot more heat and uh, you do get warm quicker. So with this one, instead of running around at 21, I'm running around at 24, 25 on the climate control and uh, feeling warm with that. But uh, yeah, sometimes cool air comes out and that's not very nice. Yeah, definitely noticing the difference here with this 39 kilowatt hour. This is now the second rapid charge and um, yeah, I can hear the battery management system fans whirring away. I don't know if you can in the background. Very unusual. Uh, haven't got that at all on the 64 kilowatt hour. Uh, that battery management system doesn't come on whatsoever. I did use the laser thermometer on the outside shell of the battery before we left um, and I noticed that from home it was 7 degrees outside by the time we'd finished rapid charging it was 12 degrees C and uh, now that we've got here to Peterborough it's 9 degrees C so from the outside of the battery the battery isn't actually getting warm, not warm that you'd expect. Okay so I'm just going to show you the noise that the fans are making. So hopefully that came out on camera so you can actually hear the noises. Uh, I suppose while you're charging you don't care what noise it makes, so it's not a problem. Uh, it is a little bit loud inside, it's louder inside the car than it is outside from what I can hear. Uh, very interesting. Anyway, time for a comfort break. Uh, we're at 32% already and uh, 34 kilowatts of charging. So we'll leave it there for a little bit and uh, see if there's anything else to report when I get back. So we're at 50, I think we're about 58% state of charge now, and uh, the battery management system has gone off again. Anyway, we're at 64% state of charge now, it says 19 minutes to go until 80%, um, and we're pulling 25 kilowatts, so not a massive amount, you know, we're not seeing um, 40, 43 like I have done in my 64. Um, kilowatt hour Kona, so it seems to draw power at a lesser rate. That's what it's feeling like to me anyway. So in summary for the second rapid charge, that was 53 minutes to go from 20% to 80%. Interesting, that's quite close to the 57 minutes, even though we started at 20%, and we only added 95 miles of range. So that equates to 107 miles an hour charging rate, a little bit less than last time. And we're back at the same Instavolt charger that we started at. This is now the third rapid charge um, inside, what is it? Uh, we started at uh, seven o'clock, five and a half hours. So it's the third rapid charge in five and a half hours. And uh, yeah, this time the battery management fans aren't on. So what have we done? We've done another 76 miles. Uh, this time we got four miles per kilowatt hour on the way back. Traffic's busier, so probably um, it's the slower traveling. I didn't actually go slower. Um, 
especially on the dual carriageways, but there was more traffic in the way on the A roads. And the time, one hour and 40 minutes so far. So about seven or eight minutes longer than uh, it took to get there. And hence, um, better efficiency. Range, uh, we got here with 44% left and we started with 92%, I believe. Um, range left to go in comfort mode says 75 miles. Car went straight onto the charger again and it's drawing 33 kilowatts at the moment. Uh, oh, look at that actually, uh, 49%, 42 kilowatts, 43 kilowatts. So we're charging at 42, 43 now. I didn't see that on the last couple of chargers. So it seems the more rapid charging you do and the more miles you do, the faster it charges. <laughs> um, that's sort of in reverse, isn't it? Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, with my 64 kilowatt hour, the premium SE, um, I do notice. Ah, I thought that was a motorbike in the background, but no, it's not. It's the fans for the battery management system. So even though it's now charging at a higher kilowatt rate, the fans are kicked in uh, for the battery management. Interesting, so it's three rapid chargers, and on each time I can hear the fans coming in at different points and different times, but this is the only charge that I've experienced the car drawing 43 kilowatts. So it's good that it does. Um, I was starting to wonder whether um, it wouldn't actually do that, whether it could only draw at 30 something, because that's what I saw on the last two. No. Anyway, very interesting. Uh, the mystery of this is we can't tell if it's the charger with an issue or the car. Um, to me, it looks like it's the car managing it and changing the amount of kilowatts that it's drawing as it chooses to. And for some reason, after two previous rapid chargers and two stints of uh, quite good driving, it's decided to let me have a bit more power, even though I can hear the fan on at the moment. Anyway, third time of trying, compared to my premium SE 64 kilowatt hour, um, I do miss the heated steering wheel, especially first thing in the morning. That's a really handy feature, so if the heating system isn't really brilliant um, on a cold winter's morning, then it's nice to have the heated seats and the heated steering wheel, so at least your hands feel warm. Oh, interesting. So the battery management fan has just kicked out and it stopped, but at exactly the same time it dropped down from bringing in 35 kilowatts to the car, now to 22. Yeah, very, very interesting. So just as we're approaching 70%, we're now at 69% state of charge. It's dropped to 22 kilowatts uh, bringing into the car and it's turned the fans off. Um, the battery management seems to have stopped. Very, very interesting. So no doubt if I take a comfort break and come back, it'll then be down to only 14 kilowatts it's drawing into the car. And so at 74%, it dropped down to 14 kilowatts, dropped again to 10 kilowatts at 90%. And then finally at 94%, it dropped as low as nine kilowatts. So this is where I should end the video, saying that I've now multiple rapid charged the 39 kilowatt hour version of the Kona, and on all occasions the battery management system did kick in, and it was doing something. Exactly what it was doing and why it was doing it at the various state of charge levels, I don't know. Hyundai won't tell me. And uh, I can conclude that it is a lot slower to charge than my 64 kilowatt hour version, achieving 110 to 100 miles per hour charging rates, but. It is reasonably consistent in what it does, or so I thought. As you'll have seen from one of my other videos that I've posted recently, uh, I was in a situation of deciding which of the two Konas to take, to take Cracker out for a dog walk. And I decided to take the 39 kilowatt hour and go and give it a splash of energy to uh, make sure we had enough range. And basically during that charge, I noticed something very, very odd. So we were charging from uh, 50 something percent state of charge and we only received 16 kilowatts of energy to start with um, and it dropped to 14 and it continued to stay at 14 for 15 to 20 minutes and basically I gave up and uh, didn't continue the charge it was so slow the battery management system did not come on but the amount of kilowatts being received at the car did not increase so this to me sounds like we've got a bit of a significant issue on both occasions where I've first thing in the morning taken the car to a rapid charger, 
we've experienced low uh, charging rates on both of those occasions. On the very first charge on my multiple rapid test, uh, we were getting 22 to 23, but I'd traveled 15 miles to get there. On this occasion, we'd only traveled five miles to get to the charger, and it was just as cold in the morning, and now we're only getting 14 kilowatts through to the car, even though the car already had 50% or more state of charge. That doesn't sound right to me. Initially, I loved this 39 kilowatt hour version of the Kona Electric. Initially, the driving of the car is exceptional. It really does handle even better than the 64 kilowatt hour. But from what I've now experienced of the charging and the concerns and issues I now have, it makes me wonder if the 39 kilowatt hour version of the battery is more fragile than the 64 kilowatt hour, and hence the battery management system is on more. I just don't know and can't find out for sure. But with the issues on charging from cold and not being able to add a splash and dash as successfully as the 64 kilowatt hour, I'm absolutely convinced I made the right decision. The 64 kilowatt hour version is the car to have. The 39 kilowatt hour is great to drive, but it's slower charging and it's got less range. So I don't think it really works. I'd probably buy the Ionic. And on that note, I'll leave it there. So thank you everyone for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And until next time. See you again soon.